new round of Wall Street thrillers, complete with car chases, economic disaster, and plenty of intrigue is making the rounds. Uh, I'm Kevin Roos, reporting for Dealbook, the New York Times. I'm here with three uh, gentlemen who have left behind the world of Wall Street deals for the world of book deals. Uh, we have David Lender, H.T. Nerea, and Norb Vonnegut. My instinctive reaction when I heard about these thrillers is, you know, why add more drama to Wall Street? I mean, we've got just in, in, the, in the last few months a Galleon group trial that featured, uh, you know, jilted lovers and phones being thrown in garbage trucks. I mean, do we really need more drama in this world? Well, I think, I think that, that, that what people need to realize, and, and I think the three of us share this issue of finance being somewhat of a nebulous concept in, in terms of thrillers and writing and fiction, but at the end of the day, all the people in finance are driven by some basic things, and that is that they want more power, they want money, they want love, they want more friends. I agree with that, Kevin. I think that uh, the, the budget battle right now is too scary to take to the beach, <laughs> far too scary. <laughs> so I focus on people. I think that uh, the people on Wall Street have some amazing quirks. I think things get magnified uh, when you're talking about money, too. I think that's part of why people are fascinated by what happens on Wall Street because all these odd personality types get thrown into a different world uh, when you're dealing with a lot of money. And if you're you know, the kind of person who's gonna have an odd quirk, you're gonna have a much odder quirk when you're dealing with billions or, or hundreds sure. of millions. Now, I thought there was some, some debate online about whether uh, people on Wall Street really dress as well as the characters in your book. Is it, yeah. is it really a fashion show? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> well, like like clearly, uniforms, whoever said which. that clearly didn't work at Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what part of the business you're in, too. The traders sure. dress differently than the investment bankers or the, the sure. M&A guys. These books feature really high stakes, so we've got international plots, we've got uh, espionage, we've got insider trading. Was there any point at which you said, you, know, you wrote something and you said, this is too much. No one's ever going to believe that something like this could actually happen on Wall Street. Well, it all happens on Wall Street. So you're, you're dealing with, a, you know, with an environment where you can't make the stuff up that's happening in the news today. What I was most worried about was not the international stakes, but what people really do. So I have a trader in the Gods of Greenwich who takes supplements to improve his trading. And I knew when I was writing it, that people are going to say, no way, but it really happened. What's more satisfying, uh, closing a deal or having a book come out? I continue to work in closing deals, so it's something that I find enriches my writing and keeps me current and, you know, having a deadline of getting a term sheet out and finding investors for that term sheet is something that keeps me very active in, in the scope of what's going on in this financial world. What's, what's a better lifestyle? They're both great lifestyles. I mean, I had a great time as a banker. I'm having a great time now as a, as a writer. It's hard to, to say one's better than the other. I disagree. I think it's a no-brainer. I want to be an author all day long. Have <laughs> you gotten any reactions from former colleagues, people you used to work with on, the, on Wall Street, to the books? Usually, in my books, uh, the big fat cats are the bad guys. And uh, that would mean a lot of the, my former colleagues would be painted as, as bad guys, even though there's no real people in my books. Um, but I haven't had people say, uh, you know, you've painted us in a bad light. I haven't had any feedback like that. Says it's really easy right now to blame Wall Street for everything. And I know that in, in my novel, The Gods of Greenwich, I, I have a hero coming from Wall Street. And in my previous novel, I had a hero. And that does a good thing for uh, the financial industry. It's good to see that it's not composed of a bunch of bad guys. There are good people out there sure. managing But there money. are bad guys. Too. I mean, who is, in your, in your guys' mind, is the best villain on Wall Street right now? The best and villain is down in North Carolina, and we know who that is. <laughs> he's not on <laughs> Wall Street anymore. Yeah, he's uh, out of commission, but I mean, I'm sure there will be a good novel about him someday. Again, guys, thank you so much. This thank has you. been fascinating to read the books. Uh, they're all great reads, and they will go uh, well with, with anybody's beach uh, reading schedule for the summer, especially if that beach is in the Hamptons. <laughs> <laughs>